I'm giving somebody the blues today. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Someone by the name of Pennymaster3000 uploaded the Tekken 3 companion story to the Tekken subreddit. So there was a manga that was released as a companion story to Tekken 3. Apparently, it was the main inspiration for the Tekken OVA. I don't know what Tekken OVA is, but it was an exclusive to Japan and wasn't localized in Western markets. Sometime after, some fans found the manga and did some translations. However, nobody bothered to finish translating the entire book. Not only that, raw images of the manga are scarce and many source images are broken links. So I bit the bullet, bought the book from a foreign retailer, made high resolution scans and uploaded them to the web. So this person really did a whole lot to get these images out there to the public. So clicking on volume one, let's see what it says. So volume one, you scroll down, volume one once again, you have a dove, you have Kazuya in the background. Now this first image here is pretty cool. You have Kazuya in his devil form. I think this is Nina. I think this is Julia, Lei, and then also Lei, and then Heiachi and Paul Phoenix. So now we get into the comic. Jun Kazama, she's like a part of some government agency that helps animals. And it looks like here that a baby whale gets washed on, on shore and they're basically gonna bring this whale back to the ocean. You have this giant storm-like thing approaching, crashing the ocean, crashing the water. The fishes here is scattering. And it kind of looks like they're all coming to her for like protection. In the next one, you have that whale lifting up out of the water, super high up, and she's just sitting there watching all of this. In the next panel, that whale she just saved, Kazuya, punches him. What is Kazuya doing? Kazuya is just running around punching whales in his free time. This is what he does. He collects shoes and beats up whales. And he rips it in half. Now, of course, Jun Kazama is looking like, what the? Notice, he's also naked here. He also has the scar on his chest, meaning that he already was thrown down the mountain. So, she is definitely confused. Definitely. Both of them, I like this image here. Both of them are kind of locking eyes. He looks more so like he's ready to fight, like he's ready to kill. And she is just like paralyzed with a, like a lot of emotions here. We can't see exactly what they're saying, but you can tell she's upset about the whale being killed. He grabs her hand, squeezing it, and then he shoulder charges her, and it's like pinning her down. Cause he is so weird. What is he doing? Well, first off, why is he in the ocean? Why is he naked? And then why is he all of a sudden just attacking Jun Kazama? I really wish we could see the words here. He lifts up his hand like he's gonna punch her. <laughs> look at his, look how happy he is. This guy is just so evil for no reason. So happy to just be beating people up. This is a Lei Wulong. No, who is this? I thought this was Lei Wulong, but the hair is not long enough for this to be Lei Wulong. That helicopter shines a spotlight and that sort of stops Kazuya from knocking June's lights out. Kazuya stands up and he looks like he starts to walk away into the ocean and then like a submarine pops up. And the whole time he just is smirking. The whole time he is just so happy to be evil. This is a submarine. So he's walking back to a submarine. That guy from the helicopter jumps out. Kazuya jumps on the submarine. Jun Kazama is just watching the whole time. Kazuya finally puts some clothes on. He got a robe on now. Nina Williams. Is that Nina Williams? Nina Williams. She says something that surprises him. The whole time Jun Kazama is just watching. The submarine flows away. Who is this guy? I know some of you guys have to know who this is, but Jun Kazama is wrapping up his bandages. You can tell they're all sort of sitting around at this campfire. Once again, you have Jun Kazama looking after some monkeys. Now these two are going on a walk, it seems. Oh, this is pretty cool. So you have Kazuya here, and then you have Heiachi's shadow sort of behind him. It looks like Jun Kazama is telling this guy about Kazuya. Maybe he's like, oh man, this guy's back, or oh man, this guy's a jerk. Kazuya, Julia, Paul Phoenix, you have King right here. You have Yoshi Mitsu right there, Heiachi, Nina, Law, whoever that random guy is. I still don't know who that is. So they're just walking along this beach talking about Kazuya, and they're probably trying to figure out why he would just randomly show up and punch a well. Yeah, you can see right here, she's like heartbroken. 
she just saved as well and this guy electric wind godfish from a submarine and tears the whale in half and then he was about to punch her this guy's a maniac i don't know what this island is but oh so okay so i think this is the tournament i i'm guessing that the tournament is starting or has started something like that because in the next panel you have whoever this is i think this is mardok but i could be wrong mardok looked like he's about to break naruto's back wait this is not mardok this is not <laughs> that looked like fakamram that looked like fakamram right there whoever that is he's destroying naruto jun kazama she first walks up and bows this guy says something that she doesn't like and now she's ready to fight. So this guy punches, she twists his arm, reverses it, and slams him to the ground. This is like a standard martial arts technique. Even though she's young here, she still knows something about martial arts. And what I like here too, this kick that she does, this kick is the same exact kick that she did in the trailer. I'll show you guys that clip if I can find it. You have Yoshimitsu here, Julia, who, I don't know who this is, Law, Nina, and then whoever this guy is. And that says, end of volume one. Let's go into volume two. Volume two, you have Julia on the front cover riding, this looked like a buffalo. You have Paul Phoenix riding on a motorcycle up a hill across the bridge. So I'm guessing all of these combatants are coming to the King of the Iron Fist tournament. The art style of this comic book is really crazy. Paul Phoenix looks so cool here. And then those soldiers look like they're restraining Jun Kazama. Maybe one of them punch her or she punches them or something like that. Nina, oh, this looks like Lei. I could tell from the hair, this is probably Lei. He's leaning on the tree, just observing the whole thing. Yeah, this is Lei. Look at how cool he looks. I, I really wish I could see what they're saying because Jun Kazama says something. Paul Phoenix responds, she says something. So you, you could tell they're having like a whole dialogue here. They're all sort of talking to each other. And then, wow, all of a sudden, Lei introduces Armor King. Paul Phoenix is like, whoa, that's my opponent. And then Lei's kind of chuckling as these two fight. On the flip side, you have the legendary battle between Julia and Ganryu. Ganryu, super big here. He's trying to do that little, uh, 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 that little hit. That hand is like the size of her whole upper body. She kicks him in the chin and he's just smiling. Look how big he is in comparison to her. Then he grabs her. I think in Tekken 7 this move is like a power crush and then he gets like a launch off of it if you don't break it. But he does that grab and he's like squeezing her. He's trying to break her. And look at him smiling. It looked like he's missing the tooth, bloody nose. The whole time Lei is watching, just grinning, Jun Kazama is, is like watching in horror. He's licking his lips. Julia does that double chop to the head. Oh, she hits his ears. She hits his ears and his ears start bleeding. He lets go, falls down, Julia wins. Now Jun Kazama walks up, she's talking to her, I'm guessing, whoa! So Jun Kazama walks up and is talking to her and then Julia starts swinging on her. Throws a kick, throws an elbow, put your dukes up. This is kind of interesting. So Julia is really like going all out. She's really just trying to put the beat down on Jun Kazama. Jun Kazama, I'm guessing she having some flashbacks to Kazuya, whoever that guy is, and also being pinned down by Kazuya. And you could tell she's kind of like scarred by that interaction. She gets back up, she starts fighting back. She throws a right, throws another right, throws an elbow. Julia at one point in time goes super sane. This is just really cool to look at. I'm just scrolling through looking at their fight battle. So Jun Kazama throws a kick and that pretty much knocks the wind out of Julia. She falls down crying and Jun Kazama is there trying to like help her, console her. You can see here in this bottom right image that Jun Kazama, even though Julia kind of like sucker punched her, she's still trying to help her, right? I'm just scrolling through some of these because I can't really see the words, so it's kind of hard to say what's actually going through her mind, but you can see here that Kazuya is still on it. She jumps off a mountain? Oh, she's pushed. So she's standing on this cliff thinking about Kazuya, and someone shows up behind her and pushes her. And this boot here kind of looks like Nina's boot. Down at the bottom of the river, she sees bear claws. And then this big bear comes out. Look how big this bear is. Huge, huge bear. About to like smother her. In this comic, 
June Kazama is just getting the worst. She's just getting attacked, attacked, attacked constantly. Volume three, Jun Kazama sitting on the shoulder of some guy. I'm guessing this is the guy that's with her. You have squirrels all around kind of going back to that theme of her being one with nature. Picking up where the bear left off. That kind of looks like Kazuya pushed her. Even though it looks like Nina's boot, that looks like Kazuya just by the hair. But Kuma was waiting down at the bottom and now Kuma is ready to fight. Jun Kazama, she kind of throws her hands up. This is kind of like a, a non-aggressive stance. Usually when you're ready to fight or you're ready to defend yourself, your hands is higher, like above your shoulders. But the fact that her hands are way down here means that she's not even thinking about fighting uh, Kuma. The two are talking here on the right side. Kuma licks her and they're both just kind of like laying down, just like cuddling. Heiachi shows up. Look at how Heiachi looks. He has the, like the biggest frown on his face possible. This guy cannot be frowning harder if he tried. Okay, so Kuma is about to fight Jun Kazama, but they become friends and then Heiachi shows up and he's like, what is happening here? Heiachi goes from just standing up talking to her. Something happens in this scene. It's hard to say what happens, but he starts crying. Heiachi breaks down crying on Jun Kazama's lap. What is happening? Rubbing Heiachi's back as he's crying. Look at him. This is, this is unbelievable. Now at the same time, she's still think, thinking about Kazuya. And I like here, it's, it's funny how Kazuya is just like always naked. Like every time she thinks about him, it's him like naked because that's how they were first introduced. Explorers break open the cave or maybe this is her friend or something like that, but they shine a light down into the cave. Jun Kazama leaves and you can tell that Kuma and Hiachi did not like that. Both of them frowning, both of them upset that they're alone time was ruined. Back on this yacht, Lei is kind of being like the face of the Mishima Zaibatsu. He's hosting this party, popping champagne, talking to people. Jun Kazama shows up in this like traditional Japanese outfit. This guy's confused. Nina Williams shows up looking super, hmm, <sighs> the proportions here. Is your knees down here? <laughs> Where's your knees at? Now, the person here gets on the microphone, I'm guessing makes some announcement, and then you see someone standing at the top of the staircase and it's a dress shoe and pants. 11 more images, we can see that it's Kazuya. Kazuya looking like a pack of hot dogs in a suit. Look at this man's shoulders. I really love the art style of this comic book. You can tell that even though he's standing up top looking at the whole party, his attention is on Jun Kazama. Paul Phoenix is also in the crowd, of course he's hype. I wonder if in this comic book they fought already because I don't know if you guys know this but at before Tekken 1, Paul Phoenix and Kazuya fought until a draw. So I wonder if Paul Phoenix is like, hey, you remember me, you want a rematch or you know, something like that. And you can see Kazuya just walks right past. Paul Phoenix ran up the steps yelling at Kazuya and Kazuya just walks right past him. Kazuya gets swarmed by a bunch of Instagram thoughts while Paul Phoenix is being dragged away by someone. It's hard to tell. Kazuya pushes away one of the Instagram thoughts. Lei isn't happy about that for some reason and Jun Kazama is just watching. So far in this comic book, Jun Kazama is either standing and watching or she is showering with someone with like love and affection. Now at this point in time, someone detonates a bomb and it blows up the whole entire ship. Nina Williams is talking to Kazuya about something and he doesn't like that. He punches her. Meanwhile, the whole ship is still blowing up, beating her up, doing a combo and Jun Kazama starts to cry. The end of volume three, you have sort of Kazuya here and he looks like he's being like engulfed by this devil. Up top right here, looks like his devil form. Um, Let's go to four. So issue four, you have Kazuya really beating down Nina Williams, grabbing her by the hair, kicking her, stomping her. And meanwhile, this whole ship is like sinking. Volume four, Jun Kazama is kind of seeing it like the real devil that he is. You can see he has the horns there, the wings. The whole ship is in ruin. Jun Kazama is trying to help or like pick Nina Williams up off the ground. Kazuya runs up these stairs and he's trying to flee, I guess. Of course, the mission was about to have a backup helicopter. They're gone. Everyone else who's on the boat, good luck. You survive, or if you don't survive, we don't care. 
actually Lei is the only one on this uh, helicopter. So I'm wondering if Lei was the one who detonated. Because if we go back to the Tekken motion picture, I did a video about that. And in there, Lei was the one who blew up the island. Lei was the one who was secret. He was like working with the Mishima Zabatsu, but he was really trying to kill off Kazuya and Heiachi so he can control it. So it kind of seems like he was doing the same thing here. What tells me that is you have a Kazuya sitting on this rock on the shore and he looks like he's crying i don't know either way he's struggling with something juno kazama walks up behind him as he tears off his suit it looks like the boat starts to either collapse or like crash into where they're at juno kazama jumps on him and grabs him to like protect him and this is when more of their connection start to form you can see kazuya he's not really like trying to beat her up anymore. You can see that Jun Kazama is starting to have some kind of effect on him. This is still like very early stages of their relationship. What? Kazuya is tripping. Did he just yank off her, her dress? He ripped off his suit jacket and then he ripped off her like kimono, I think it is, and she starts crying. I don't know what he's saying, but he's just being very aggressive, Squ squeezing the wrists. This is like, oh Jesus Christ, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna say it. The whole time she's talking to him though. And at this point in time, they kind of have that kiss. Even though he's being a jerk, the biggest jerk you can be, Jun Kazama still wins at the end of the day. The ship sinks, Heiachi shows up on Kuma's back, saves Jun Kazama, and then they go back to the city. Kuma looks tired and they both just walk away into the city. The end of volume four. Volume five starts off with Lei walking into the Mishima Zabatsu headquarters. I'm guessing that's, that is. Look at his office, super big. Desk in the middle, you have that big boss chair and then you have these huge windows. Oh, is that Kazuya? Yeah, Kazuya is already there sitting in his chair and he got his boxing gloves on. He's not, he's not there to fight. He's there to throw hands. You can see he also has his shoes on. He knows what Lei tried to do and he's not happy about it. Now we get Jun Kazama in kind of her iconic outfit. I think this is her Tekken 2 outfit or whatever. She's going to the Mishima Zaibatsu building. Paul Phoenix is kind of just chilling. Who is this, Lei? Kazuya beat up Lei and he stumbles back to this location that Paul Phoenix is at. And Paul Phoenix is like, what? <gasps> Kazuya is chasing him. Kazuya is chasing Lei and Lei is trying to run away. Oh, I, okay, let's see. So Paul Phoenix is kind of like spitting back at Kazuya. And I wonder if they're gonna fight here. I think Jun Kazama feels that Kazuya is tapping into the devil gene. I don't know how, but Kazuya punches Paul Phoenix. You can tell by this big splatter. <sighs> Look at this, Just I love this imagery here. This imagery is so cool. You have the Mishima, building standing very very tall in the sky with sort of this white storm over top of it meanwhile you have Kazuya beating down everyone so he beats up this fake Marduk he beats up this person his hand is covered with blood oh <gasps> and then Heihachi shows up I was wondering whose foot this is but this is Heihachi this is the real deal right here what's kind of interesting too so I thought Paul Phoenix was gonna have like a closer match but Paul Phoenix basically gets one shot here he actually punches Kazuya but he's smiling it does nothing he hits him with a kick hits him with another punch hits him with a gut punch headbutt face grab throwing him and Kazuya is still smiling so Jun Kazama is now in the building she runs to help this guy um I guess they hear like commotion coming from up above and I'm guessing this person is going to tell her to go and try to help. Oh, so Kazuya is thinking about the time when Heiachi threw him off the mountain so of course they're having their run back. So I don't know what the words is saying but you have Kid Kazuya right here, you have some female, I'm guessing this is like, this is either Kazumi or this is just someone who maybe helps him or like looks after him like a nanny. This is probably a nanny. Oh, so Heiachi grabs Kazuya's arm right here and he breaks it. I was wondering what this lightning is, but right here you could tell that he broke his arm. He broke it at the socket. Kazuya uses his other arm and hits him with an electric. See, that's the thing. If you're going to break 
one of the Mishima's arm, you need to break the arm that they do electrics with. Breaking that other arm is pointless. Break that electric arm, Heiachi. For failing to do so, he gets hit with an electric. Now, Kazuya is beating on him with one hand. Oh, he doesn't he doesn't break it. It looks like it's, it's fine right here. Junokazama grabs his arm and then she shoves him off. So that arm's not broken. He's he was just faking for the cameras. He was just faking. He's choking Heiachi out. And then Kazuya lifts up her hand to try to backhand him. Wow, what's happening here? So Jun Kazama was gonna backhand him, but then stop. And it looks like she starts saying something. And then at the same time she's saying something, Kazuya is thinking back to the nanny and I'm guessing there's some similarities there but a bright light starts emanating from Jun Kazama and it blinds Kazuya. He starts to panic, he starts to flip out. Heiachi, oh he's transforming, I think he's transforming into the devil. Heiachi, Kuma, they save Jun Kazama, they run outside and then boom, here it is. Kazuya is like freaking out, his power is going haywire. Now, something that I want to mention before we scroll past this. I've seen on the Tekken subreddit, people say, Oh, I wish, oh, I hate how they've made Heiachi the good guy in later Tekken games. Everything that I've seen right here, he doesn't seem that evil. Besides throwing Kazuya off a mountain, he's protecting Jun Kazama on multiple occasions. And also, he hasn't really fought anyone besides Kazuya. Kazuya is the one going around beating people up and you know he seems like the bad guy right now he turns into the devil form they're both just watching like what is this look how crazy this devil form looks it, like in tekken 8 in the tekken bloodline the, i want the devil form to really look like gnarly in the tekken movie that they did and just in the games their devil forms devil kazuya just looks like too anime -ish. he just looks too stupid in my opinion this image here, he really looks cool. You really fear him right here. And I think I've seen this image before. You have Kazuya, and I can't tell if this is tears or if this is blood or if this is just like the effect of the devil gene taking over. But that's the end of version five. We have two more. Volume six, Heiachi, Junkazama, and Kuma. The black wings, these big long fingers. Devil Kazuya is here. I don't know if this is his first time transforming, but I believe this is the first time that Heiachi and Jun Kazama is seeing it. Heiachi once again saves Jun Kazama, and then he kind of like sacrifices himself. He gets beat up by Devil Jin right here. Oh, and then Devil Kazuya charges up this beam and he hits her with a laser beam. You can see her like tangled up with lightning right there. At this point in time, she's thinking about when he was naked, their kiss, and then him naked again. This looks like Jin. I know it's not Jin, but I'm just saying like, you can tell the father versus son similarities here. This looks like Jin. Like if they removed the scar from the chest, I would think this was Jin. Now Kazuya is going to beat up Jun Kazama, but Kuma steps in. This is crazy. You have, oh, wow. So Kuma hits him, right? One, two, and then Kazuya grabs Kuma by the neck and just squeezes so tight. And it looks like he breaks his neck or something like that. Kuma is out of it. That is crazy. Kazuya is just so vicious here. Jun Kazama finally punches him, but of course it's gonna do nothing, you know. He's in his most powerful state. Look at how he looks here. This is what I want in Tekken 8. All that goofy Tekken 7 Devil, Devil Kazuya, they need to get rid of that and they need to bring this one into the game. Jun Kazama punches him and then now it kind of looks like his devil genes, his devil form starts to go away. You can see his human body starts to show a big beam of light. Uh, what is happening here? No, he's kind of staying in the form it, it looks like. I don't know what Jun Kazama said to him, but whatever it is, it confuses him, it stuns him a little bit, and he flies through the roof. He's basically feeling a lot of emotions here. And then what is this? Is this from the sky? Is this two meteors coming from the sky? I don't know what that is. Whoa, whoa, wait. So he flies up in the sky and it looks like he starts summoning meteors or something down and it hits everything. It's hitting this skyscraper, this one, this one, and you can see he's kind of like 
just going crazy. Maybe whatever Junkazama says means nothing to him. And he's like, I'm gonna go up to the sky and rain down hell. This building is destroyed. Junkazama is down there hurt and she's just looking at him as he flies away. That's the end of volume six. One more volume, then we have the Namco Extra. So Kazuya is up in the sky being the most villainous. <gasps> oh my God, oh my God. So you have Kazuya up in the sky being just an asshole. Angel shows up, appears out of thin air. Look how majestical she looks. Wings like a bunch of feathers. You can see her eyes here. She looks crazy. So Angel, look at her face. She's kind of like showing no emotions here. You can kind of see that she's like a, a being on a higher plane. I like how they frame Kazuya like smaller in comparison. The, the way they're framing this is putting him in as like an underdog. So Kazuya is just like stunned by the light at this moment. What is happening here? Wait, what is happening here? So, so Juno Kazama shows up or Angel shows up. Kazuya is blinded by the light and then he lands, he goes over to Jun Kazama, he's standing over her, oh the ground starts to break, the ground starts to break because of all the meteors this guy shot, he reaches out to save her and he flies away with her and of course she's surprised. So it took me a second to figure out but I think what happened is Angel showed up and her presence her light that she was emanating was enough to wash away the darkness, the evil that was overtaking Kazuya. I think she's so powerful in this comic that she doesn't even need to fight. Her presence alone was enough to defeat the devil gene with inside of Kazuya, at least temporarily to stop him from going on his rampage. But that is what happened in my opinion, in my interpretation of this. That angel scene really is like left for interpretation. What's really cool here, you can see the devil gene eyes, but as the panel continues, you can see his eyes sort of return back to normal. You can see Kazuya sort of regaining his humanity. He's sort of relinquishing the devil gene. His wings is uh, sort of downgrading. His legs is becoming less more devilish. His body is looking more human. He's kind of thinking about his dad. His, I'm guessing this is his mother, Kazumi. He's kind of thinking about uh, more peaceful thoughts. They lock fingers. It's in they both, they're both flying through the sky having sex. Is that what, what? So Kazuya is in like this hybrid devil form with Jun Kazama and they're flying through the sky having sex. And then there's some beam of light that catches their attention. What is this? What is this beam of light? This comic book is just taking so many twists and turns. I don't know what this is. There's something up there, but it's not showing it. So Kazuya lands on the ground. She's naked. Where's your clothes go? He's leaving her. So that means she's just gonna be naked, stranded on some beach or something like that. I mean, I guess that's the least of your concerns, if the whole town just got pummeled by an asteroid, like meteors, you're not gonna be tripping off some random person naked in the streets. That's the least of your concerns, right? Kazuya walks away, he's kind of smiling here. He And it's not that evil grin that he was doing earlier. This one is more of like a see you soon kind of smile. He flies away, Jun Kazama tries to run after him and he's just gone. Juno Kazama put some clothes on. Uh, what is this? So you have Paul Phoenix, Heiachi, whoever this guy is, and Julia all watching this. Juno Kazama is just standing there. What is this? So you have this sort of storm that is swirling up top. I wonder if, what is Kazuya doing? This is so, I had to stare at this part here for like a minute to figure out what's happening. But Juno Kazama watches uh, Devil Jin fly away, right? And then it, it cuts to this panel, this five, and I don't know what this Japanese lettering is, but I'm guessing this is five years later. You have Jin Kazama running through the forest. You have Jun Kazama. I'm guessing this is where Tekken 3 picks up at. Is this Kazuya? No, she's thinking about Kazuya. She's telling Jin about uh, her father and maybe, I don't know, some good stuff, some bad stuff, who knows? This is how it ends. 
So that's gonna be the end of this one. I really like the part in there about Angel just showing up. Like, I was expecting them to fight and, and like have a battle, but Angel just shows up and she kind of just gives wisdom. I hope you guys enjoyed this little read through, this little reaction. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. I'm definitely gonna be talking about more things tech and hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.